And we're going to make the password one, two, three, four, my name, and my email address. And you can do you can do something simple like time zone equals central if you're hosting a box across the country. Uh, attach equals yes to make sure that it attaches the file. Say caller ID equals yes. That's probably good enough. And those options can actually be set up here, but uh, we'll just we'll just put it down here just just so we're sure. All right. So before we do that, let's actually. Let's actually make that uh, work. So we edit the DID.conf, then we go in after the dial, and we do extend the nine number, and then we do voicemail, and then we're going to say, we, in, this, in this instance we can do voicemail extend because it's just going to pass the extension, and we're going to say, we're going to have it play the unavailable message. It's important to notice that if you don't want to wait as long to go straight to voicemail, you can change the 20 to 10 or 5. And as long, the longer you have that number, the higher you have that number, the longer it is before they actually get their voicemail. So if you know you're going to be out of the office, there's other options. <laughs> but another option is to set that to a lower amount so we'll go straight to voicemail. Right. All right, so let's, uh, let's give it a shot. I moved it to 5 so we don't have to wait as long. So you know, as you can see, we're recording a voicemail. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up. And you see that in the command line as well. Yep. So, so now we've got a voicemail. What good is having a voicemail if uh, I can't check it? So I'm going to go ahead and edit my extensions.conf and add a really quick voicemail checker. So I'm going to say voicemail, my context. And I always like to make my... Uh, my voicemail context 500. I don't know why, but every machine that I've ever done, my voicemail context is always 500. Of course, it can be anything you want. My voicemail number, I mean. Two, and the, yeah, it can be any number you want. As long as you're not already using it for something else. Right. Because <laughs> keep in mind that the, this priority order will override anything else. So I could have a 500 somewhere else, but as long as it'll follow the priority order. So picture the call coming in, checking demo, checking DID, and then checking outbound. If it doesn't get anything, it's gonna, it's gonna fire a 404 back to the phone saying it wasn't found. So voicemail main, I'm going to say nothing at all. And then I'm going to add another one at the end. A hang up. And as you can see, the order goes from one, two, to three. Yep, the priority. But you can also use one, N, N, N. That's very true. Which stands for next. Yep, so you can actually do this too. Um, it means the exact same thing. So let's go ahead. Oh, we, got to, we forgot to include it. So simply we go, we go above our outbound and say include voicemail. We're going to dial 500. Comedian mail. Mailbox. And this is, you know, this is where it actually asks for everything. So I'm going to dial 999-999-9999. Pound. Password. One, two, three, four, pound. You have one new there we message. Go. Press one for. So now, that's fun, except I don't want to enter that every time. So now I know that it's going to come directly from me. I know I'm dialing my own voicemail. So I'm going to add extend, or no, I'm going to add, sorry, 999-999-9999. Now this is great if you're doing this maybe for your house or other things. If this is a business you're planning to use this for, and you want to make sure that each person's voicemail is secure, you wouldn't want to do this. This is pretty much putting their password in what, for them. What, it is not putting their password, it's just putting their user account. But what you can do is, is if, if they're calling from their desk phone, um, you can actually pull the caller ID variable just like this. However, our caller ID shows 100. But you can say caller ID, and you can say num, just like this. And that'll fill that spot in for you, and it'll still ask you for the password mm -hmm. like I'm going to show you here. Save one step. Yep, saves one step. So now if I dial 500, password. it just asked me for my password. All right, so let's take it one step further. You trust everybody on your phone network, blah, blah, blah. So you added S. Now you dial it. You have one. No password. New message. <laughs> so that's the way personally in my office 
with uh, my, asterisk, my asterisk installation, I have it set up. Of course, it's an office of five people, so that makes sense. And they all report to John <laughs> if something goes wrong with the phone. <laughs> if something goes wrong with the phone. Somebody, so, somebody stole my voicemail. That's right. <laughs> so, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is, personally, my favorite part is, uh, is getting, um, getting uh, GTalk working. Now, we've already signed up for an account. And I'm going to show you the file, but just keep in mind we're going to change the password. And any GTalk account will work with if you already have a Gmail account. Right. So um, I'm going to cheat because I already have uh, Jabber and GTalk written. And I'm going to copy them to Etsy asterisk. And I will show you the insides of the files. However, I'm just going to recommend that you go and download ours. Um, they're not that advanced. It's just the first time you configure it, it's kind of kind of difficult. So simply, you've got debug off, auto prune off, auto register on. It's client, server host it's connecting to because it is Jabber and it can connect to any Jabber based system. The username, and you have to add slash talk after that, otherwise, it won't authenticate. The password, the port, if you're using TLS SASL for encryption, and then the status message, this is what shows up next to the username, and the timeout. Then I'm going to edit the GTalk to show you that. This is the default context it come, comes into if it allows guests. And then here's the guest context. It's going to say this allows all, allows you law, and, and uh, the default context in the extensions.conf it drops you into is guest. All right, so now that we get that out of the way, we're going to write a really quick and dirty, simple uh, GTalk script. So in the extensions.conf, we're going to say, <coughs> Under default, um, below voicemail, we're going to say include, if I can type it, guest. Right here, I'm going to say guest. And we're going to say extend s, because s is the context that, it, that a default drops it into. We're going to say answer. This is very important on on GTalk. If you don't say answer, there will be no media path. Media path is already kind of finicky on it. Um, if you're behind a firewall like we are, we're going to show you that audio won't work, but we see the call come in. Um, SIP slash 100. We're going to ring for 20 seconds. Then we're going to go to voicemail for extension 999999999. All right. So we're there, now we're going to do asterisk space minus R, do a reload, and we're going to do um, jabber show connected. And we'll see that we're already connected. So we're going to go ahead and have Tony give me a quick call here on GTalk. Open up my GTalk here, and I am going to select Astrocast. He invited me, so you should right. see that pop up. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and call. You having an issue with your G talk? Oh, there it goes. Now try it. Now yeah. we got your presence handler. So now try to give me a call. There we go. And you'll see because we're, unfortunately, because we're behind a firewall, uh, the call doesn't come in. So I'll go ahead and hang up here. Yeah, go ahead and end the call. So unfortunately, because we're behind a firewall, that doesn't work. However, uh, it does work. And uh, <laughs> as contradictory as that sounds, we just have a little extra firewall rule here before we. Right. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna I'm gonna have I wrote this quick and dirty uh, get name script because by default uh, GTalk doesn't support uh, um, caller ID name. So I wrote this script that'll be available on our website um, that will support getting the name from the GTalk channel. So actually the user name of the person that's calling you will show up. And I'm gonna copy that to the AGI bin. And I'm going to, uh, I have to quickly install um, the AGI protocol, or the AGI application. This is available freely on the internet, so 